بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله الذي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف جعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين We continue our discussion about istishab We gave a definition of istishab and clarified the difference between istishab and qa'idatul yaqeen Basically we said that istishab is when right now or at the time that you want to apply istisab okay. it's now or maybe for example yesterday one but at the same time that you want to apply istisab you have both yaqeen and shak you have yaqeen about the previous condition and you have doubt about the later condition but still your yaqeen is there about the previous condition Qaidatul Yaqeen is different because in Qaidatul Yaqeen you had Yaqeen but now you have doubt about that previous condition. So basically you yourself are doubting your own Yaqeen. So this is the difference. We gave also some examples. Now is the time to study the arguments for validity of istishab. Adillatu hujjiyatil istishab Arguments for validity of istishab Ulama ul-usul have different opinions about istishab Of course, most of them agree But even those who agree, they have argued differently Okay? Ikhtalaf al-usuliyun في كيفية حجية الاستصحاب. علماء الأصول have different opinions about how to prove the validity of الاستصحاب. Okay, about the validity of الاستصحاب means how to prove the validity of الاستصحاب. They have different opinions. فذهب القدماء إلى أنه حجة من باب الظن. Earlier scholars <coughs> have maintained this idea that istishab produces van is more than 50% and as you know some of the vans are mu'tabar some of the suspicions or uh, van which is more than 50% is hujja and this is one of them ذهب القدماء إلى أنه حجة من باب الظن It doesn't produce yaqeen but it is a van that you can rely on Then they themselves have argued differently استدلوا عليه بالوجوه التالية They have argued in different uh, following ways تالية means following Okay The first is some people say rational people, even if they are not Muslims, if they are not religious, just because they are rational in their life, when they know something was the case, and then they doubt, they assume that the previous condition is still going on. This is the manner of the rational people. This is the way rational people behave بناؤ الأقلاء على العمل على وفق الحالة السابقة ولم يثبت الردع عنه من جانب الشارع so rational people have this idea that they act upon the previous condition and we have not received any ban or prohibition against bina'ul uqala you know so as long as there is nothing in our hadith or ayah of quran 
that stops us following Bana Ulukala, we can just follow Bana. It's just common sense. Yeah? If Bana Ulukala have something that we have clear guidance against it, then it will uh, stop acting upon, uh, upon Bana Ulukala. Is it correct to say Bana is principles? Or the building bricks? Bana Ulukala means the the habit of Ukala, the, the practice of Ukala is this. Do they use the Bana or Sira? Same thing. Yes, the same. Means they have such foundation, such principle, Mabna. They have such Mabna that they do like this. So there are two things. One, that this is Bana Ukala. Second is that there is no prohibition from legislator <coughs> because you know for example maybe some okala for example say something like for example there is no problem in giving one kilogram very good rice and taking two kilogram for example rice which is not very good but we say this is reba okay but maybe for rational people, they don't see any problem in this. So sometimes we don't follow Banaul Okala because we have a specific guidance that even this is a problem. Yeah? It's like, for example, uh, when it comes to food, what normally people eat, you eat, but maybe you have some extra requirements either because you are an expert in science or you are a religious person so you can always say i require more care and caution than what banaul uqala is okay so it's not that we become irrational we are just becoming more careful you understand So, Bana Ulukala, Ala Al Amal, Ala Wafq Al Halat Al Sabiqa, they assume that the previous condition is still continuing and they act upon the previous condition. And there is no Rada, Lam Yathbut, means it's not proved. A Rada, prohibition from legislator. So, we don't have any clear ayah or hadith to say that Allah or Rasulullah have asked us not to act as uqala. This is the argument. But there is observation, there is objection. One objection is that we don't accept this as a general rule that Uqala always do istishab and act upon the previous condition. There is no such generality. Mudafan ila adami kulliyataha. So one problem, but you know he, he wanted to make it very brief, so it's a bit not clear maybe. So the first problem is. So he says, in addition to the fact that this is not very general, because Uqala in al umur al khatira in significant matters, they don't act according to istishab. Even if they are able to have one. So if something is very important, for example, if you want to send a check of million pounds to someone, and you know his bank account of last year, <laughs> you don't do a stashab. Yeah? You, you make sure that still this is the same bank account. So, uh, he says when uh, uh, things become khatir, means significant. Khatir doesn't mean dangerous. Khatir means important. In uh, Du'ai Abu Hamza, we say, Ma ana wa ma khatari. 
what am I and what is my significance? Okay, so first of all, we don't accept, it's not known to us that Okala act according to istishab in all cases. So kulliyatuha, its generality is question. But the second problem is, you said there is no rad'ah from shari. The legislator has mm -hmm. not banned, has not prohibited following this. He says, but we have already said that we should not follow than. La taqfuma laysa laka bihi il. اجتلبوا كثيرا من الظن or إن الظن لا يغني من الحق شيء. so these verses of the Quran that prohibit following ظن can be used against استصحاب which only produces ظن not certainty. أنه يكفي في الردع الردع is like منع like nahi, radar, mana, zajr, these are similar. Yakfi fi radar ma dalla min al kitab wa sunna ala nahi. What in the book and the sunna indicates prohibition and a teba qayr al ilm, following anything other than knowledge. وَقَدْ مَرَّتْ تِلْكَ الْآيَاتِ عِنْدَ الْبَحْثَ عَنْ خُجِّيَةِ الْخَبَرِ الْوَاحِدِ Those verses have been discussed before. We had them before when we were talking about خَبَرِ الْوَاحِدِ Of course, there is something that we had in خَبَرِ الْوَاحِدِ and can be repeated here. If you can prove that this is not a loss, just a land, it is valid than, then those verses would not include it. Yeah, like Khabar Wahid. We said Khabar Wahid is not just than. <coughs> or Zawahir, Amarat, these are not just than. Two, argument two. Mastanada ilayhil avodi fi sharh mukhtasar al hajabi. In his commentary on Mukhtasar by Hajabi, Al-Azudi says, Inna istishab al-hal Anna al-hukm al-fulani qad kana wa lam yudhanna adamuh wa kullu ma kana kathalika fahuwa madhnoon al-baqa He says, Istishab means something was there. And al hukm al fulani, such a such a you know ruling was there. Valam yuvanna adamu, and we don't have than about a stopping and this validity or this continuity of that hook. The previous hook is known. And now there is no van about this continuity of that hook. It's not that you say 60%, 70%, that hook has gone. So what does this mean? Than here means thought to it, or idea. Pardon? What does this than here mean? Means more than 50%. More than 50%. Less, than, idea, less than 100%. Is it ideal actually? Huh? Likelihood? Likelihood, but likelihood which is more than 50 percent. So, and al hukman fulani. Fulani means so and so. There is a ruling which was there, Qadkana, Walam Yuvanna Adamuhu, and there is no high probability of a stopping this continuity azudi says 
If you know that this hook was there and there is no van that it has stopped, then there is one that it continues. Okay? But there is a problem with this. First of all, we cannot always say whatever was there is maznun al baqa. Now we have one that it continues. But also, who said this land, even if it is proved that we have land, who said it is valid? So first, we are not accepting that always whenever there is a means you have previous condition. Mm -hmm. Previous condition produces land for continuity. Maybe a person was alive 100 years ago. Mm -hmm. You cannot say, you know, I have land that still is alive. Yeah? Yes. So it's not that always produces van. Secondly, even if it produces van, who said that van is muqtabar? Thaniya, sallamna lakinna al-asl fi al-dhunun adamu al-hujjiya. The main assumption about dhunun is that they are not hujjah unless you can prove that they are hujjah. The first Assumption is van is not hujjah and nadhana la yugni anil haqqa shayyah. The third argument is to use ajma. Some usuliyun have said ulama have consensus about validity of istishar. Qal al-allama al-istishabu hujjatun. Allah Mihali says, Istishab is hujjah li ijma' al fuqaha Because of consensus of fuqaha, ala annahu mata hasala hukmun, thumma vaga al shak fi turu ima yuzilhu, wajab al hukmu ala ma kana awala. When there is a hook and there is a doubt whether something which is going to remove that hook. Okay? Toru means happening. Ma yuzilahu means what it would remove that hook. So you have doubt whether something has happened that removes that hook. What should you do? Wajab al hook ala ma kana awwala. So Allah says, Fuqaha, jurists have this consensus that if there was a hook and you have doubt whether something has happened that removes that hook, you assume that hook is still there. وَلَوْلَا الْقَوْلُ بِأَنَّ الْإِسْتِسْحَابِ حُجَّهِ And had it not been that we say إِسْتِسْحَابِ is حُجَّهِ Then we should remain stuck to take the previous condition or a new condition. We cannot choose any. But إِسْتِسْحَابِ says choose the previous condition. Again, Ayatollah Subhani has observation here, he has objection. He says, first of all, this ejma is ejma a manghul. You remember, we said ejma is manghul and muhassal. Muhassal is what you acquire, you yourself investigate, do research, and find this is the opinion of all ulama. But ejma a manghul is that someone else has reported. We said ajma'i mangul is not hujjah. You have to yourself become sure that there is ajma'i. So, adamu hujjiyat al ajma'i al mangul. Ajma'i which has been reported, which has been transmitted is not valid. First. Second problem. You remember we said ajma'i al madraki is not also valid. When you know what is the basis for ajma'i. <coughs> Then you have to investigate that yourself. For example, there is a hadith. Based on that hadith, there is ijma. But if you have today question about authenticity of that hadith or about meaning of that hadith, that ijma is not working because that ijma was based on this hadith and that hadith is something that you can yourself examine. Khususan إِذَا عُلِمَ مُسْتَنَدُ الْمُجْمَعِينَ 
al ijma'ul manghul is not hujja especially when you know what was the madrak mustanad mustanad means what they refer to as a reference Means you stand, isn't it? Stand. Mustanat can mean something you stand on, you rely on. So you cannot rely on this English? No, no, when you know, when you know that those who have made consensus relied on something, if you know what they have relied on, then that ajma is not hoja. You have to examine what they relied on. Okay? As if Allah Zalik add to this Rafdu Iddatil Min Al Fuqaha Al Istishab. Some of the jurists have rejected Istishab. Yes, yes. So we are sure that there is no Ijma'ah. So, Ijma'ul Manghul is not Hujjah, even if you think might be Ijma'. Mm -hmm. But today, we say, we are sure that there was no Ijma'. And even if there was Ijma'a, because we know that Madrak and Mustanad, again, Ijma'a is not Hujjah. So, there is no Ijma'a, and we are sure about it, because there are Fuqaha who disagreed. And also, even if there was ijma, that ijma is based on a text or a reference that we can examine ourselves. Yes. Sheikh, uh, for ijma to happen, do you need a uh, hundred percent of the ulama to agree? If a few disagree, then it's not, not ijma. Ijma is consensus. Yeah, they, yeah. So it means that all people. For example, in, in our case, all ulama mm -hmm. have to agree. But then we have lots of discussion, which generation of ulama, okay? And there was, for example, you know, an idea that uh, it is just enough to be able to discover the opinion of ma'asum. So even if there is no consensus, but you can be sure that Imam Zaman was with these people or in their circle, you know, then you can be sure. So depending on how you articulate ijma. But simply ijma means to have consensus of ulama, of especially early generations. And then we say these people could not have agreed unless there was something very clear for them. If there was no hadith or it was not clear, they shouldn't have had ijma. Shaykh Tusi, for example, had another idea through Qa'adi Lutf that uh, if ulama, all Shia ulama, are going to make mistake, Imam Zaman would uh, inspire one of them or, you know, somehow. Uh, put forward mm -hmm. the right idea so that all Shia jurists would not agree on something wrong. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Let's look at an example when different scholars both claim to ijma for differing opinions. Mm -hmm. So does that also depend on how the scholars have defined their view of ijma, whether it's for a certain time period? Yes. What was the scope that they examined? Did they? Uh, look for all ulama or ulama of certain age and then all ulama of certain age or only the influential ones. Amal mutaakhirun. We said al mutaqaddamun, the earlier scholars, they used van. They said, Estesha produces van and van is valid with different ways. Bana'ul uqala or what Azodi said or Ejma. But Ammal Mutaakhirun, later generations of scholars, Fakadistadalu bil Akbar, they have argued from Hadith. 
و اول من استدل بها الشيخ الجليل الحسين بن عبد الصمد والد الشيخ بهاء الدين العاملي the first faqih who used the hadith to argue for istishab is the father of Sheikh Bahai rahmatullah alayhima and they were from Jabal Amil so they called them Al Amili sometimes they called them Jabai someone who is from Jabal Amil sometimes Jabai sometimes they say Amili they don't say Jabal Amili Jabai or Amili fi kitabih al ma'ruf bil aqd al tahmas bi the father of Sheikh Bahai has a famous book known as Al Aqd Tahmas bi. What are those hadiths? Tahmas bin you know, King Tahmas was one of the Safavid kings. The first hadith is Sahih of Zurar. But because there are more than one hadith from Zurar, so we say as Sahihatul Ula. Because we have also Sahih Thaniyah for Zurar. The first hadith of Zurar is this. روى الشيخ الطوسي بإسناده عن الحسين بن السعيد عن حماد عن حرايز عن زرارة شيخ الطوسي narrates with his own chain of narrators from حسين بن السعيد إن شاء الله in علم الرجال you study that شيخ الطوسي and شيخ الصدوق when in their books like تحذيب الاستبصار فور شيخ توسي and من لا يحضر فور شيخ الصدوق when they say for example عن الحسين بن سعيد it's not that they directly necessarily took this hadith from that person حسين بن سعيد can be a person who had compiled one of the collections of hadith so they are quoting from that collection Therefore, they mention also their snad. What is my chain to reach the first person in this chain? Mashikhe. So in the end of some of these books you find. So they tell us that because there were, you know, 400 usul. Usul arba'ma. And then we have this kutub arba'i, four books. So they had those 400 and maybe other things as well. They were narrating from the author of those hadiths and giving also us the way they reached that person. So we can see whether that chain that they had is reliable or not up to the first person. And then from the first person, we can see also the narrator and check. So, Zurara says, قُلْتُ اللَّهُ I told him, either Imam Baghir or Imam Sadiq, Ar-Rajulu yanamu wa huwa ala wudu. A person sleeps and he is in the condition of Tahara, he has wudu. For example, was in the middle of the class, and tired <laughs> and he came to the class to Hosea with Wuzu. Now, atujibu al-khafqatu wal-khafqatan alayhi al-wudu. He becomes very sleepy and the eyes closed once or twice. He is not sure whether he has slept or not. Sometimes this may happen. فَقَالَ يَا زُرَارَةِ أَوْ زُرَارَةِ قَدْ تَنَامُ الْعَيْنِ وَلَا يَنَامُ الْقَلْبُ وَالْأُذُنِ Sometimes the eyes are very tired and like they sleep, they close. But the ear and heart are awake. What does it mean, the ear and heart? means... If something is making a noise, for example, something moves here, they don't see, but they can hear. 
You know, sometimes you close your eyes, your eyes is closed, but you can hear. Yes? If you can still hear, then your wuzu is okay. Sometimes I sleep, but heart and ear don't sleep. If all of them, three of them sleep, wuzu is necessary. Okay? A sleep of heart means you are, you don't understand. You know, sometimes maybe you don't see, you don't hear. For example, you either you are deaf or you have put something here or you are tired, but still you are conscious. You are aware. Or maybe you are in a very quiet place. You don't hear anything, but your heart is awake. Okay? During the class, normally which type of sleep you have? First grade is common. We do the second and the third. Thank you. Okay. The eyes and ears working, but the heart is sleeping. I love it. Some people are clever. They leave their eyes open and they sleep. <laughs> Okay. If something is moved next to him and he didn't know, he didn't notice, is it a sign that he slept and his wuzu is void? La. The mom said no. Because maybe still he is awake. Unless he becomes certain that he has slept. So even moving of something without drawing your attention is not a sign that you slept. This is the same thing in other words. Hatta yastaiqna, we say it in another word, other words. Till something clear comes about it, means you have a proof. Wa illa, otherwise, fa innahu ala yaqinan min wudu, he has certainty that he had wudu, not he has wudu, he has certainty that he had wudu. And never breaks certainty with doubt. He would only break it with another certainty. Okay? So if you are sure that you have wudu, and then you doubt whether you slept, you assume that your wudu is there. Unless you are sure that you are slept. Okay? I think we have the example of Mama Ali. They told him the Adam was stuck in his uh, ankle. And he, it was a lot of pain to remove it. But they could remove it with pain. So that wasn't taking his was too as well. Because his heart was there with it. Am I, is that the way to explain it or is it different? So he was aware. Yeah. He was aware. He was awake and he was aware. Uh -huh. But... He was so much connected during prayer to Allah SWT that the pain of body was not felt. Maybe even he was aware that they are doing this, but he didn't feel the pain. How do we use this hadith as a proof? What is the way that the hadith indicates validity of the stishab? We say, You know, this hadith is about which case? About wudu. Because the question of Zurara was about 
wudu. But you cannot limit it to wudu. Because the answer that Imam gave Zurara is more general. Because he said, لا ينغض اليقين أبدا بالشك Never breaks certainty with doubt. It's not about wuzu. He doesn't say never break wuzu with doubt. It's a matter of yaqeen and shak. Yaqeen should not be disregarded just because now there is a doubt. So this is zahirun. So it has apparent meaning that this is a general preposition. Qadiyyatun kulliyyah. It has been applied to wuzu as a case, but wuzu is not the only meaning for this rule. It's not limiting it. Okay? So the question was about wuzu, but Imam gave a general rule. For example, if the question was about Najasa. It's the same as we have in another hadith. So, la yanqud al yaqina abadan bishak. This alif and lam in al yaqin and al shak is general. It's for gems. Means yaqin as such would not be destroyed by shak as such. Not yaqin in wuzu. And shak in wuzu. Okay? Lamul jins. Inna lam fi qawlihi al yaqeen. Lamul jins. Lal ah. This is the lam for jins. Means general. You know, we have three types of alifun lam for ahd. One is for jins. Wa yadullu. كعلى هذا أن التعليل بأمر ارتكازي. What can help you to understand? What can be an indicator, a guide for you? Is that Imam عليه السلام is arguing in the way that Imam wants to awaken in this person something that he himself knew. أمر ارتكازي means something it's in yourself. It's there. Imam wanted to refer to something. So you yourself would realize that when you have yaqeen and shak, you should not dismiss yaqeen just because you have doubt now. What is that amra irtikazi, that inner and inside knowledge that you have? Adamu naqd mutlaq al yaqeen bishak. Yaqeen in an absolute sense means any yaqeen should not be broken with shak. Not only yaqeen about wuzu. La khususu al-yaqeen bil wudu. Okay? So, this is the first hadith. The second hadith, again from Zurara and again it's Sahihah. Okay? Rawa al-Shaykh fi al-Tahzib. Shaykh al-Tusi, rahimahullah, in Tahzib, mentions an Zurara rewayatan mufassalatan. Tashtamilu ala as'ilatin wa ajwibah. He narrates a very detailed hadith which has several questions and answers. Wa nahnu nanqulu maqati'a minha. We mention some passages of that hadith. The person says, Zurara, Asaba sawbi damun ra'af. Ya damun ra'afin. Asaba means reached. My dress, nose blood. So his nose was bleeding and it dropped on his clothes. O ghayruhu. Oh, Shayon Mani. Maybe it was not 
blood of nose, another blood, or maybe something not just like money. So the question is, I know that something nudges has reached and touched my clothes. فَعَلَّمْتُ أَثَرَهُ I made a mark. You know, maybe the dress was not like white that you could see the blood. So he made like a circle, something around it to know that this is where he has to wash. فَعَلَّمْتُ أَثَرَهُ إِلَىٰ أَنْ أُصِيبَ لَهُ مِنَ الْمَاثِ I made a mark so that then I bring water and wash it. Possible. Fa'asabtu. So this happened. This nudges touched me. Wahadartu salata wa nasiitu anna bithawbi shay'an. The time of salat came. I prayed. After that, I remembered. Wasallaytu. ثم أني ذكرت بعد ذلك. I think he means أصبت الماء here. No no. No if أصبت الماء. Not أصبت الماء. Yeah. He wanted to bring water, but he didn't wash. Okay. Maybe he found water, but anyway, forgot to wash. After Salat, he remembered. After Salat, remembered. You know the rule in Rasala is there also. If you knew that your dress was, was not just, and you forgot, and after Salat remembered, you have to repeat your Salat. Okay? Tu'idu salata wa taqsiluhu. You have to repeat your Salat وَتَقْسِلُهُ Wash your dress. Okay? You have to repeat your salat and wash the dress. Then he asked another question. فَإِنِّي لَمْ أَكُنْ رَأَيْتُ مَوْضِعَهُ If I had not seen the place that it has touched my dress, وَعَلَمْتُ أَنَّهُ قَدْ أَصَابَ But I realized that it has touched my dress. Okay? So for example, he was bleeding. He knows it reached his dress, but didn't know where. But عَلَمْتُ أَنَّهُ قَدْ أَصَابَ I was sure that it has reached. فَتَلَبْتُهُ I looked for it. فَلَمْ أَقْدِرْ عَلَيْهِ and I didn't find it. فَلَمَّا صَلَّيْتُ وَجَبْتُ After Salat, I found it. Again, تَقْسَلُهُ وَتُعِيد You should wash your dress and you should repeat Salat. Because it doesn't matter whether you knew its place or not. What is important is that you knew your labas was not just, your dress was not just. Yeah? When you knew your dress was not just, your Salat is void. Then he says, فَإِنْ ذَنَنْتُ أَنَّهُ قَدْ أَصَابَ If I thought that it has reached me, and I was not sure, لَمْ أَتِيَقَّنْ I thought it has reached me, I was not sure, looked, فَنَظَرْتُ فَلَمْ أَرَى شَيَّا But I didn't see anything. After Salat, I saw it. Imam said, Okay, now that you have seen it, taqsiluhu, you have to wash it. But la tu'idu salat. You don't need to repeat salat. Qultu lemadhalik, why? What is the difference between this and previous two conditions? Aha. Because in the first, you knew and you had seen the place. In the second, you had not seen, but still you knew. Here, you are not sure. Before Salat, you were not sure. You thought, but you looked and you didn't find, and so maybe he had not touched me. After Salat, you realize that it has touched you. 
Imam a.s. replies, لَأَنَّكَ كُنْتَ عَلَى يَقِينًا مِنْ تَحَارَتِكَ you were sure about your tahara. Thumma shakakta. Then you doubted. What was his responsibility? Istasha. So he didn't do anything wrong. Doesn't that the, the previous shak turn into yaqeen when there's no other possibility of, for example, a najas touching you while you're in salah? So you looked for it, you didn't find it, and then in salah, so you had doubt. Uh, so you knew at that time you didn't have anything on your clothes? You didn't know. You didn't, no, you didn't know that you didn't have. Yeah, no, no, you didn't know. You didn't know that you had. But you didn't know that you didn't have. But then there's, when you're in Salah, <laughs> it's likely that that was the only possibility of, of that happening. So that, doesn't that uh, shock turn into Yaqeen? <clears throat> Why? Because he knew after. Now you know that this didn't come except before Salat because at the time of Salat nothing had happened. So you knew that this is from before. Okay? But before Salat, you didn't have duty of washing because yeah. so you were not that's, sure. That's gone. But then when you're in Salat, if you find it. Not in Salat, after okay, Salat. Uh, after Salat, if you find it. Okay. Um, so you wash the dress. So you washed it. Okay. But there was no other time when it was possible for that Najasa to come into contact with your clothes. Except for before. Before. Salah. Okay, no problem. So then does that... If you don't know your dress is Najas, it's not a problem. Mm. Uh, this is another rule. Mm. If I don't know my dress is Najas, mm. I assume it's Tahir. After Salat, I realize Najas. Mm. So for the next Salat, I have to wash it. But it's not a problem for my previous Salat. Even if I know that it was Najis at the time of Salat. But when did I come to know? After Salat. After salat. That's not a problem. So, Shaykh, uh, now I have Yaqeen that my uh, clothes was actually Nijis before the prayer. Yes. After the prayer, I have now Yaqeen. Yes. So, this Yaqeen here is not counted then? It's not a problem. It's not a problem. You can repeat it if you like. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to you have to avoid uh, najas, najasa if it is known for your clothes of course if it is for your body and then it depends if it is not on, in the place of wuzu and not affected your wuzu again the same thing but if it has made your wuzu void, then the problem is la lacking wuzu. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another issue. Yes, yes. Okay. So, Imam alayhi salam said, لَأَنَّكَ This is very important. Again, we have here a question about wuzu, but the rule is general. لَأَنَّكَ كُنْتَ عَلَى يَقِينٍ مِنْ طَهَارَتِكْ ثُمَّ شَكَكْتَ you had certainty about your tahara and then you doubted. It's not suitable for you to break yaqeen with uh, which is certainty with doubt. Okay, what is the way we argue? Watchful istidlal. The way for explaining this argument. في سؤاله الثالث على أنه ظن قبل الدخول في الصلاة بإصابة الدم بثوبه. The narrator focuses the third question on what that he thought before entering salat that blood has touched his dress. He thought. But Lam but he was not sure. Fanawara, then he looked. Falam He didn't find anything. Fasalla, then he said his prayer. Falamma faraga anha. When he finished his salat, Raadam. So the blood. Which blood? The same blood that Dhanabihi Kabla Salah. That he thought has touched. 
But because he didn't find it, then he thought it was okay. فأجاب الإمام عليه السلام بأنه يغسل ثوبه للصلوات الأخرى. إمام said he would wash his dress for the following prayers. ولكن لا يعيد ما صلى. But he would not repeat the prayer that he has made. فسأل الراوي عن سببه. The narrator asked and the and the sabah means about the reason. Man, now who sell off a thoban najis? He said, now I know that my dress was najis. So how can this be correct? Like the first two cases. Why? In the first two cases, salat was a problem. To'idu salat. Why here? Fa'ajaba alayhi salam bi wujud al farq. Imam said there is a difference. In the first two, before Salat, also you were sure that it was Najis. Here, you were not sure, you had Yaqeen, and you had to assume Yaqeen is continuing. فَأَجَابَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ بِوُجُودِ الْفَاقِ وَهُوَ عِلْمُهُ السَّابِقْ بِالنِّجَاسَةِ الثَّوْبِهِ فِي السُّورَتَيْنِ In the first two forms, two types, two conditions, he had previous knowledge about Najasa of his dress. فَدَخَلَ فِي الصَّلَاةِ بِلَا مُسَوِّقٍ شَرْعِي Without having any مُسَوِّق مُسَوِّق means permit. Without having any religious permit, something that legitimized, he entered Salat. وَشَكُّهُ فِيهَا بَعْدَ الْإِذْعَانِ بِطَهَارَتِهِ فِي السُّورَةِ السَّادَةِ but in the third type, he doesn't have ilm. He has shak. He has doubt about najasa. And he knew, he admits that it, it was tahir and doubted. So he entered in the third type. Entered salat with a religious permit. What was the permit? وَهُوَ عَدَمُ نَقْضِ الْيَقِينِ بِالْتَهَارَةِ بِالشَّكِّ فِي النَّجَاسَةِ Certainty about tahara would not be broken by doubt about najasa. وَمِنْهُ يُعْلَمْ أَنَّ ظَرْفَ الْإِسْتِصَابِ So you realize when was the time and container for istishab? When is istishab implemented here? Before salat. Yeah. Although after Salat is asking this question, but it means that it was istishab, uh, which was possible to be do it before Salat. ثُمَّ إِنَّ لِلْإِسْتِصْحَابِ دَوْرًا فَقَدْ فِي إِحْرَاضِ السُّقْرَةِ Please be also very careful. What is istishab doing here? What is the role of istishab? With istishab, we are not talking directly about salat. With istishab, we bring tahara of the dress to the time of salat, and then we say salat was okay. So istishab directly doesn't say anything about salat. Lil istishab dawran, istishab has a role, dawr means role. فَقَدْ فِي إِحْرَادَ السُّقْرَى In securing the minor premise for us. You know Sukhra and Kubra? The same two sisters <laughs> we had last year. Okay. This only secures the minor premise, which is Tahara to Thawb. But the fact that Salat is valid in such dress doesn't need a That is... Another rule. That rule says you can pray in a dress which is recognized as a Tahir dress. Okay? How did you recognize that this is Tahir? Here with Estashab. Maybe sometime you wash it. But here with Estashab you 
proved, we are secure that it is Tahrir. Yes. So if you have Yaqeen that this uh, blood dropped and it came onto your dress but you couldn't find it, but then you have to wash yes. whichever area is possible. Yeah, you, you have to yeah, wash it as it much it. that you become certain that Najasa is washed. وَيَتَرَتَّبُ عَلَيْهَ أَمْرُ الشَّارِعِ بِجَوَازِ الصَّلَاةِ فِيهِ What will be coming after this when Tahara is established is the command of the legislator. We have a ruling by God, the Shari' that Salat is permissible in this dress. وَمِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ أَنَّ امْتِثَالِ الْأَمْرِ الشَّارِعِ when you implement the religious command, whether it be vaqi or zahiri, yeah, you are able to say salat in lebas, which is tahir, either really tahir or it is tahir with the help of istasab, which is zahiri. Doesn't make difference. Your salat is okay. Okay, this is the third, the second hadith. The third hadith, if you are not tired, just one more hadith and then we can finish. Hadithul Arba'ma'ah. This is the hadith which is known as hadith of 400. 400. Yes. Rava Abu Bas Abu Basir wa Muhammad ibn Muslim an Abi Abdullah which means Imam Sadiq and Abai from his fathers means Imam Baqir, Imam Zain al Abidin, Imam Hussein, and Amir al Mu'mini. So finally, from Amir al Mu'mini. The hadith, which is a detailed hadith, says, Man kana ala yaqeenin, thumma shakka. Whoever had yaqeen, then he doubted, he carries on with his certainty. Because doubt cannot break yaqeen. You may think that this is actually about qa'idatul yaqeen. Do you remember Qaidatul Yaqeen? We said at the beginning. Qaidatul Yaqeen is that you had Yaqeen about the previous condition, but then you doubted about the previous condition. So someone may say, Man kana ala yaqeen thumma shakka means Qaidaya Yaqeen. Fal yamza ala yaqeen. But we don't accept that. Because in Qa'idatul Yaqeen, you don't have any longer Yaqeen. In Istishab, still you have Yaqeen. For example, yesterday I thought so and so is Adil. And today I doubt his Adala of yesterday, not his Adala today. You know, if I know he was Adil yesterday and I have doubt whether he's Adil today, this is Istishab. But if I was sure that he was Adil yesterday, and then today I am doubtful about yesterday. Okay, this is Yaqeen Qadir. Ar-riwayatu salihatun lil-istidlal biha ala hujjiyat qa'idat al-yaqeen. This riwayah might be possible, might be good to argue from it for validity of qa'idat al-yaqeen. Iza. كَانَ مُتَعَلَّقُ الْيَقِينَ وَالشَّكْ وَاحِدًا ذَاتًا وَزَمَانًا بِأَنْ يَكُونَ مُفَادُهَا مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى يَقِينٍ مِنْ عَدَالَةِ الزَّيْدِ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ ثُمَّ شَكَّ يَوْمَ السَّبْتِ فِي عِدَالَتِهِ فِي نَفْسِ ذَلِكَ الْيَوْمِ وَبِالتَّالِي شَكَّ فِي صِحَّةِ الطَّلَاقِ الَّذِي تَلَّقَ عِنْدَهِ فَلْيَمْذَ عَلَى يَقِينَ Someone may use this to prove Qa'idatul Yaqeen and say, okay, assume that yesterday he was Adil. Although you have doubt today, 
but because you had yaqeen before, you assume. This is one way of using this argument. But it is also possible to use it for istishab. And that is to say that I don't have doubt and certainty about exactly the same thing. It's about the same thing, but not exactly, because one is for one time, one, the other is for the another time. Yaqeen, for example, of wuzu at 10 o'clock, shak about wuzu at 12. This is the song. كما هي صالحة للاستدلال بها على حجية الاستصحاب إذا كان متعلق الشك غير متعلق اليقين زمانا okay. For example إذا أيقنا أيقنا وتيقنا The same أيقنا or تيقنا أجبت أمير المؤمنين says أجبت لمن أيقنا بالموت كيف يضحك Aiqana means the one who is certain. Ida aiqana bi idalati yawm al jumu'ah wa shakka fi bagai idalati yawm al sabt. You understand the difference between this and qaidatul yaqeen? Qaidatul yaqeen. The same day of jumu'ah is now a problem. You doubt his adala on the same day that you were sure about his adala. But in Qadi Astasab, Jum'a is still okay. The doubt is about the second condition, which is Saturday. فَلْيَمْذَ عَلَى يَقِينَهِ مَثَلًا لِيُطَلِّقْ عِنْدَهُ وَلِيُصَلِّ خَلْفَهُ If you know he was yesterday Adil and today you have doubt, still you can use him today as witness for divorce or to say prayer behind him. Okay, but why ulama use it for istishab? Although in the first assessment you may say it can be used for both. But we say this is for istishab. We don't believe in validity of qaida to the other. This is more obvious or you know there's a stronger apparent meaning for istisha for two reasons. Inna sahihatain to shakilan karinatan munfasilatan ala tafsir hadhe rewaya. You know, we had those two sahih from Zurare. Those two serve as evidence. Disconnected, you know, you have Karine Mutasale, Karine Munfasale. They act as disconnected, means it's not in the same speech, but still they shed light on understanding this hadith. Those two are obviously about istishab, therefore, they help us to make sure that this is also about istishab. Fatuhmalu ila ma humilat alayhi rewayatu sabiqa. So, the third hadith also will be interpreted in the same way that you interpreted the first two. Plus, the second reason why we take it to refer to istisha. In ta'alila fil hadith, the explanation which is mentioned in hadith, ta'alilun bi amrin irtikazi. It's a kind of explanation which uses something which is built in you. It's inside you. And that is for istishab. وَهُوَ مُوجُودٌ فِي الْإِسْتِسْحَابِ دُونَ قَاعِدَةِ الْيَقِينَ You know, in istishab, it makes lots of sense to say, you have yaqeen and then you doubt. Follow your yaqeen. But in shak qaidat yaqeen, when shak has damaged yaqeen, what does it mean to say continue with your yaqeen? He says, I have no yaqeen. You understand? So, 
when we say man kana ala yaqeen thumma shakka fal yaqdi ala yaqeen fa inna shakka la yanqud al yaqeen it seems yaqeen is still there and this is telling you to refer to yourself why you should damage and disregard yaqeen which is there but in qaidat al yaqeen there is no yaqeen yaqeen finished because I had yaqeen that he was Adil yesterday and now I have doubt that he was Adil yesterday. So, these are the arguments for validity of istishab. Qudamar, I repeat, earlier scholars tried to use Arguments to show that this type of van which is produced by Estesab is valid, like Bana'ul Uqala, or what uh, Azudi said that Makana Mojudan, Mas'uba Mas'nunul Baqa, or Ejma. Later scholars use Hadith, Hadith of Zurar about Wuzu, Hadith of Zurar about Tahara. And this third one, which Abu Basir and Muhammad ibn Muslim have narrated, and it's general. Okay, inshallah, we continue discussion about istishab with few points that you have to observe about istishab. Please, if possible, study these few pages because uh, there are some difficult questions that we should address. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alam.